Hello everyone, how are we doing? Welcome back. Uh, we got a really fun lineup for this month and uh, looking forward to sharing it with you. Uh, most of these have been on the pairing in the last month or two. I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to start off with a, uh, a Bubbles, which is kind of nice. This is a Command de Bourgogne, which is a uh, Chardonnay based. Um, it's a Blanc de Blanc, so 100% Chardonnay. Um, from my good friends at Pierre Close Imports. Um, being Chardonnay, it's, uh, it's similar to a Champagne. Um, could be a little bit crisper, a little bit cleaner than a lot of Champagnes um, that you get that have that uh, more Brady style characteristic that is so well known and loved uh, across the Champagne region. Um, but nonetheless, uh, really delicious. Um, you're not really gonna find this anywhere because they're so small producers, so it's kind of fun. So we always talk about pairings. Sometimes you just drink the wine. This is one of those wines just chilled, delicious. Um, definitely could do it with oysters or any sort of like opening appetizer kind of stuff. Um, it's so easy to pair sparkling wine because it's so versatile in the way that it does. Um, probably don't want to see a lot of spice with this in any way, shape, or form because it just doesn't. It's a really beautiful high acidity that I think will clash pretty hard with that. Um, but crisp, clean, beautiful Chardonnay sparkling from uh, from Burgundy. Um, by our little buddies, uh, Coates de Margot. So fun stuff to start. Next up, we have uh, one of our favorite pairings. Uh, this is Linehole Vineyard. Um, this is gonna be from Von Winning, this very old uh, producer in the Fowles region of Germany. Um, this was on our pairing. Um, Von Winning has been around, uh, I don't wanna overstate it, but an extremely long time. And the winemaker was in town. Um, this is a Trocken Riesling, so it is going to be dry. Uh, these guys just know what they're doing. The higher end reason that we brought in for this pairing was one of the craziest reasons I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, Trocken meaning dry. Um, it's not, it's cabinet. So you'll know that the predicate system for the Mosel Valley kind of goes cabinet at the bottom and then all the way up to Trocken Baron Ausley, say, which is the sweetest of the Rieslings. Um, but this one, uh, Trocken meaning dry and on the nose, you get tons of that kind of like uh, uh, petrol kind of smell or gas smell, which is actually really appealing to me in, in Rieslings. Great minerality, huge nose, like just coming right out of the glass. Trocken, it is dry. Um, it's rounded. That's what you could say when a wine isn't sweet at all, but at the same time has a roundness to it. That's uh, non-perceivable residual sugar. Um, so. I'm sure there's very, very, very little residual sugar in this, um, but really well-rounded, really beautiful, um, quintessential Riesling. I mean, just kind of the way that I think it's great. Um, I would love this with a ceviche, aguachile, um, any of those nice kind of like bright uh, dishes with a little bit of spice. Um, I love raw fish with Riesling. I think it's fantastic. Um, and I like the green notes too. I say kiwi aguachile. Um, but any agua chile, you know, um, with its green that has some green notes to it, um, I think you could do like, you could do sushi with this that I think would be fantastic, um, really delicious. Um, fun wine, I hope you guys absolutely love it. Uh, definitely getting very close to the peak of our available spending on uh, the wine club, so good for you guys. Uh, we just absolutely love the wine and thought you guys should have it. Uh, next up, we have a very fun wine uh, from Vinica y Vinica. Um, they are coming to us uh, from the Ronco del Mele, which is up in the very northern parts of Italy. So we're talking up in Colio, 100% uh, Sauvignon Blanc. So you're probably very familiar with the grapes, uh, or the grape, sorry, um, but probably not familiar with the maker or where this is from. So often Sauvignon Blanc that we know is going to be from uh, Australia and New Zealand. Um, and then in Napa, they do a lot of Sauvignon Blanc there as well. Obviously Bordeaux is another great place for uh, Sauvignon Blanc and Simignon uh, to pair together. Um, but this one really kind of stood out to me for just its clarity as character of Sauvignon Blanc. And on the nose, you would be able to blind taste this and say, this is Sauvignon Blanc. It's that clear in its uh, premise. Um, it just has all the grapefruit, like big florality, big minerality. Um, it's exploding out of the glass once again, like just smell this for a little while and really kind of like get into the idea that this is Sauvignon Blanc uh, at its core. Um, Exactly what we remember, what I remember. This wine is uh, absolutely perfect for what a Sauvignon Blanc should be, in my opinion. 
Um, we paired this with a bunch of beautiful vegetables, actually. Um, kind of a fun uh, play on uh, like crudo. So it, this thing takes on vegetal characteristics really well. Um, it takes on green things really well. It takes on fat very well. You could do uh, roasted fish with veggies. You know, you could do stinging nettles are happening right now. You can uh, puree those to make a nice puree that I think would pair extremely well with this wine. Um, but remember that it's uh, it's got nice high acidity uh, from the cold climate being up north so high. So I would put this with a little bit of fat. I would put this with something green. Um, Sauvignon Blanc is a very fun pairing no matter where you go. I just think the wine is in the varietal itself is expressive, fun, and very different. Uh, next up, I know that I think that you guys have had this before. Um, I can't believe the wine club has been around for a year now. It's kind of crazy to think about. But this is Thibaud Bourguignon. Uh, he is an incredible producer in the Samir area of uh, the Loire Valley. Um, this one is coming to us. Uh, well, it's the Sauvignons. Um, so different areas, Samir and Sauvignons. Sauvignons being further out uh, on the western side, away from the coast in the Loire Valley or the Valley de Loire. Um, but this is his uh, rosé. We have a single vineyard, Shannon Bonks, and those are some of the most beautiful wines that I've ever had. Uh, this rosé speaks to me on a very deep level. It is exactly what I want to drink when I think rosé. Uh, much uh, crisper and cleaner than the Provence style um, that people know and love, it is me as well. But it does not come down to this. I think this is like, he is one of my favorite makers. I'm obviously very excited about him and his wine making. And I think that this is just such a beautiful uh, version of Cabernet Franc uh, from the Loire Valley by one of the great producers. Um, Rosés are coming out right now. This is the fresh. This is this year's. I don't mean this year's like 2023. It's 2022. So uh, always by the releasing last year's rosés right now. On the nose, uh, you get those red characteristics, uh, ripe strawberry, uh, you get a little tartness, maybe cranberry in there, there's mint, uh, there's a little bit of eucalyptus in there. Um, very fun nose to smell. How often are you guys like really smelling wines, like getting deep into the glass and just kind of writing down? I, I was just at a beer pairing event um, at the Craft Brewers Summit uh, yesterday, actually. And um, I was asked, you know, how to pair, and obviously we're fairly well known for that here. Um, it's different with every pairing, but I will tell you that part of building uh, the palate and the understanding of pairings is journaling your wines. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be an everyday $6 wine. It doesn't matter. Smell it. You're not going to have to worry about being um, embarrassed for wrong things. No one's going to accuse you of saying something that isn't in the wine or that is in the wine that you missed. So write it down, what do you smell? And then just don't say strawberry, so ripe strawberries, unripe strawberries. Uh, that's a very Psalm Guild way of doing it and I agree with it thoroughly. I think that it's a great way to journal and document your wine tasting so you can go back and be like, this rosé had these notes in it, this rosé has these notes in it. How does that work together? Um, but this one, exactly what I said with uh, the nose. And in minerality, if you don't know what that means, I mean, think about the smell of like when you smash a rock. Um, that smell that comes out, that is minerality. You lick a rock, which I highly suggest you do actually, um, it's going to taste minerally. Um, you're not going to say it tastes rocky, it tastes minerals. Uh, rocks are just combinations of minerals uh, pressed together over time. Um, so that's exactly what it is. The restraint on uh, the alcohol and on the fruit on this is just incredible. The acidity is beautiful. It's bloomed out fully within the wine, but not overtaking it. So it's not like an acidic wine. It just has beautiful round acidity to it. Um, you do get some of those red notes. You definitely get some of those big green notes. Um, this to me is a great wine for many variations. Right now, if you're asking me, I'd make a mushroom risotto with grilled chicken breast. That's what I'm thinking would be fantastic with this. Fairly easy to do. Um, and I think that this is really like the king of rosés for me. This is just delicious. Every year I look forward to the release. We don't get a whole lot of it, but what we do get, we cherish, and I hope that you cherish it as well. Uh, next up, we have another really fun wine that was on the pairing that not not very many people had heard of, including myself. Uh, Schiaba. Do you know that great varietal? Because I did not know Schiaba. Um, this is from, once again, way up north uh, in Italy. Um, this is by Donna Rouge, and uh, Schiava to me had some very fun characteristics that we'll talk about in a second. This one's from uh, 2016, 
Uh, the gentleman that makes Donna Rouge is known as an anarchist. He doesn't believe in the rules, doesn't believe in following the rules, and makes wines that he thinks are fantastic from great varietals that usually aren't grown in that area of Italy. Uh, but yet, when you taste these wines, you will know right away how exceptional and fun this is. Um, you can notice uh, how light the wine is. Don't let that trick you. It's actually a fairly substantial wine for how light it is. Uh, color doesn't mean a whole lot. You can have humongous tannins and you can have humongous acidity and humongous all sorts of things in a very light wine. Uh, the color of the wine is how long it stays on those grapes and if those grape skins and if those grape skins are highly colored or not. Um, so don't let the, uh, the misnomer that it, uh, wine has to be dark and inky for it to be big. Trust me, it's not the case. Most of the time, really dark, dark wines are going to be very fruit forward. Um, this, on the nose, is kind of hard to trace for me. Uh, I think Grenache a little bit. I think Pinot Noir a little bit. I taste, you know, I smell red fruit in there. So that's definitely something that's in there. Uh... I haven't used this term in forever, but like uh, dried rose petals, I kind of get that in there. And there's a dusty characteristic that I find in a lot of Northern Italian wines that's in here as well. And it's opening. So I would suggest opening this wine ahead of your dinner um, or ahead of whatever you're doing and uh, giving it some air. It's gonna need it in order for it to really flourish and do something special. Yeah, it's changing completely. Now I'm getting more red fruit, a little bit of black fruit in there maybe fun wine to smell. I mean, smell it, pour some, smell, taste it right away, let it sit for 10 minutes, swirl it around, do your thing. Such a fun wine. It is kind of like Grenache and Pinot Noir come together. It lacks that really heavy medium bodiness of Pinot Noir. Um, it definitely has those top red notes of Grenache. Um, this wine is fun. It's crisp. It's clean. Uh, it's got great fruit qualities to it. It's got wonderful acidity from once again being so northern. Um, I'm thinking right away like a bolognese. Um, I would go traditional Italian with this wine uh, straight up. I think this is great. If you're drinking a uh, Brunello style Sangiovese, so a little bit more structure, a little bit more depth, I think this is right in that same kind of cat category. Uh, Sangiovese also being a very red fruited grape varietal. Um, and this is fun. Uh, this is crisp and clean, great acidity, like I said, uh, a nice rich bolognese, lasagna, spaghetti and meatballs, like go the red marinara route uh, or the red, red sauce route, uh, maybe with a little bit of fat too, I could handle it. Um, so that's where the meatball comes into play really nicely. Fun wine, I hope you dig it as much. Leave a comment when you taste this wine. Uh, let me know what you think of it and if you've ever heard of Schiava before. I'm sure there's a lot of sommeliers that know it well. Um, I did not, so it was really fun to find a new varietal. Uh, that we put on our pairing. Last but not least, we're going to end on a, on a nice rich note. Um, I tasted a Paso Robles um, Cabernet earlier uh, from one of the very top producers in Paso. Um, and it reminded me that I had some of this Donati uh, stowed away in my house. So I brought it down for you guys. Uh, this is from 2015. It's 100% uh, Cabernet and this is called Family Vineyard. Um, it says Central Coast uh, Passines. Um, but this is very much into the Paso Robles area. Uh, we also have a uh, sustainable farming agriculture going on here. They, they really take care. Uh, there was a very famous uh, Cabernet, well, I should say famous. It was a, a very um, well-suited Cabernet from Paso Robles that everyone started getting into. And we had had it on the menu for a while. Uh, it got so crazy and everyone had it, everyone knew about it, that we took it off. And I started searching for another Paso Robles Cabernet that we could use uh, that had those same kind of qualities of delicious Cabernet from a warmer climate here in California. Once again, you guys know me well enough to know that it's not something that I traditionally like to drink, uh, but when it's done well, it's very good wine um, and it's great with food. Uh, so this is uh, this has been sitting in my cellar at home for, you know, I think four years now or five years. So it's aged, you know, pretty well. We'll see. Very sound on the nose, so it's not bad. That's a good thing. You get very traditional Cabernet. So this is gonna be Coca-Cola. It's gonna be tobacco for me, for sure. Fresh tobacco, like what you would get in a, in a nice cigar. You get some of that uh, little bit of Twizzler almost appeal to it, which is strange. I think that's the warmer climate in the, that they're going from. Um, even though it's Central Coast, that doesn't mean that it's on the coast. It just means that it's centrally uh, in that area that is along the coast that's for wine growing.
still drinking incredible. Still has tons of life left in it. Delicious. Um, red fruit. I mean, this is Cabernet. This is any cab drinker is going to love this. I love that about it. Um, it's uh, it's a little less big than a Napa Cabernet, but yet nonetheless, uh, very fun, very interesting, really digging it. Um, I would pair this traditional. Uh, everyone says Flaming Mignon. Uh, it has good beef flavor, but not very much fat. Um, this I think you would do with uh, something like ribeye or maybe skirt steak, um, some fattier meat. Uh, if you drink this in the summertime, I think some nice sliced tomatoes with salt with the steak would go extremely well. Um, but this is kind of your quintessential California Cabernet done right. And I think it's really fun to have it on the, uh, the club this, this month. And uh, we have the next video coming out right away and uh, we'll be caught up with you guys. We're also going to do uh, our first bottle shop pop-up um, coming up uh, this Saturday, uh, which is going to be uh, May 20, yikes, I'm in front of this with no calendar. Um, but we're coming up on our first bottle shop. So I think that'd be really cool to have people be able to come in and, uh, and source some cool bottles uh, for great prices. And uh, we'll see you just a little bit for the next month.